as, as some of you know, and I've seen some old friends here today, you know that I was born and brought up uh, here in the Bedford, and uh, my family was here for uh, several generations. I, uh, I, uh, all my family is now either deceased or not here, but I have this lithograph, which has been in my family, uh, I cannot really tell you how long, but I know that all the years I lived here and hung over the fireplace uh, in our house. And uh, it's entitled New Bedford 50 Years Ago. And it's a lithograph, and this is an original. There are many copies around of it. A uh, lithograph by Endicott and Company in 1858. And I suspect that it's been in my family, in the Hayden family, since then. Uh, this is, depicts the corner of Union and Water Streets, uh, which in back then was the commercial center, uh, in the early decades of the 19th century when New Bedford was a major, a foremost whaling port. The artist uh, recaptured the scene some 50 years later. Uh, in this photo, the uh, Quaker merchants, leading merchants of the time, are portrayed in this picture, including uh, William Roach, Conversing, you converse, uh, conversing on the Whitestone Post. Father to the right, Samuel Rodman. Now these are names that are historic names in this area. Shakes hands with Captain Roland Crocker, a prominent, uh, uh, prominent uh, fishing captain. The prominent black merchant, Paul Cuffey, is also depicted in the right foreground of this picture. And I'm donating this to the university for perpetuity in memory of my mother, who was a school teacher in New Bedford. Now let me just tell you why the, this is important to me and the, the student union. Paul Cuffey was a Massachusetts shipping magnate in the 19th century, and probably the wealthiest African-American of that era. He was the youngest of 10 children, an emancipated African Kofi Slocum, and Wampanoag tribe member Ruth Mo Moses was his wife. Paul was raised in Westport and educated by abolitionist Quakers. At the age of 14, began the life of a sailor. Three years later, he was jailed for three months by the British during the American Revolution, and three years after that, he began his own shipping business between Westport and Nantucket in 1779. The next year, he was briefly jailed again for civil disobedience. Cuffey argued that he shouldn't be taxed as he was not allowed to vote. Although he lost his case, his action led to a change in the law by 1783 in this area. In the last two decades of the 19th century, Cuffey became a wealthy and respected Atlantic merchant trading in the Caribbean, Europe, and Russia. All this was at a time when the trade in African slaves was still booming. Cuffey and his all-black crew risked kidnapping and captivity as they sailed the hemisphere. Much of Cuffey's success came from his associations with Quakers from whom he learned of abolition and the efforts to resettle emancipated slaves in Africa. Cuffey voyaged to Sierra Leone to investigate the possibilities of immigration in 1810 and again in 1815, when he paid passage for 18 adults and 20 children. His early back to Africa venture failed. He died two years later. But he left behind a substantial estate and a, rep a reputation of philanthropy as well as, this, as a successful businessman. As a young man, he changed his surname from Slocum, the name of his father's one-time master, to Cuffey, presumably a variation of his father's first name. So it's with great pleasure that this lithograph has been in my family. It is an original, and uh, I would like it to uh, have a home here at the university in perpetuity. And I would like clearly that the African-American community 
knows how well presented we were even going back into the 1700s.